Hey Yard Nerds, today we are taking a look at these four little DDD praise palettes that I purchased off of AliExpress. This is one of the reviews that you guys voted for, so hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions today. So this is another one that you requested to. They were taking a look at the DDD Praise watercolors that I purchased off of AliExpress. So this is how they arrived. I believe they also came packaged with the Aowin palette that I reviewed not too long ago. And generally, I try to keep things packaged basically the way it comes so that we can, you know, review that too. So. I have been putting these in and out of their bubble wrap when I needed to photograph them. So I ordered four sets. I'll grab prices for you guys in a minute. Some of them are six colors. Some of them are 12 colors. This one never had a case, but it's the metallic colors. So we have two six color sets, starry color, glittery watercolor, gem color, glittery watercolor, ocean color, glittery watercolor, and since this one doesn't have any packaging, I don't actually know what its name is. The six color sets are like $4.90 on AliExpress. The 12 color sets, and this is the pearlescent set, are $4.43. And then they have like two color sets, which would be $7.99. And they have, well, they have like a, bu a bunch of different sets. I'm, I'm clicking through trying to find the four color set and I'm not necessarily seeing it and on this listing they have some other uh, sets as well like the Mirandi colors and those look more like they are um, kind of like Gensai style watercolors and then what's interesting is the ocean color set is 586 so they're not quite all the same price and I can't seem to find the four piece offering that uh, we're clearly looking at today but I'll be sure to link the listing in the description below. They also offer drop shipping, so we accept all drop shipping orders and wholesale orders, and we won't put any information on the parcels. So for those of you who are not familiar with what drop shipping is, drop shipping is when a store or a vendor offers something on their site, but they never actually carry it in their physical location, what they're doing is they're having another manufacturer or another vendor ship directly from their warehouse. So like the online storefront never really deals with any actual product. And you know, I am not always a big fan of drop shipping. I find that there tends to be quality control issues. And I find also that with drop shipped products, they tend to be way more expensive than they would have been if you just went to the source and you bought them on AliExpress from the original vendor. So that's one of the reasons I'm a big proponent of like figuring out who manufactured what so that you're not paying for that kind of name brand markup. So these are, as you guys can see, they're pretty simply packaged half pans, loose, in a plastic case. I haven't actually opened the case yet. So I think it's a slide case. Yep, it's a slide case that, there we go, jams a little bit. And uh, these are pretty common for inexpensive pearlescent watercolors. I think a lot of companies choose to go with pearlescent watercolors too because it's cheaper than buying pigments because you just dye the mica. And it might even be cheaper and more impressive than um, what I think a lot of the cheaper companies are doing, like Semiart is doing. I think they are dyeing a substrate and then selling that as watercolors in lieu of pigments. I don't, that's allegedly, I don't have any official information on that but I do know that is a technique that can be used and it's generally consistent with what I've seen from some of those cheaper watercolors. So let's go ahead and unbox them, i.e. try to get them out of their cardboard wrappers. So not all of these are going to be pearlescent like the ocean colors, even though it says glittery colors, these they might have a little shimmer to them. It's hard to tell. And they're extruded paints. And in one of my videos, one of my recent videos, somebody couldn't understand why I'm so hard on extruded paints. And I get you, their, their complaint was some of the, their favorite professional grade watercolors are extruded paints. 
When we're talking about professional grade watercolors, it's not such a problem, but with cheaper watercolors like this, extruded paints tend to be drier. They tend to take more scrubbing in order to get any kind of color or saturation. They tend to be a little chalkier than if they were poured paints. Generally with cheap paints, I've had better experiences with poured cheaper paints like the Rosa Galleria and the AON watercolors than I do with extruded paints like the Simi Art or the Xyli W or probably like the DDD praise paints today. And I don't know why I'm having so much trouble, but that's kind of like the optical brighteners argument. You know, I've had people who are like, I don't understand why you don't like them so much. Each of these things in and of themselves is not necessarily an indicator of a poor quality product. They're all just red flags. Sometimes red flags are just a flag that is red, just a warning sign. And this one is like stuck in there. And sometimes red flags are a definite indication that you're about to ski off a slope. So, well, that one came out easy. I don't necessarily like hate extruded paints, but like, okay, for example, like these are poured, these are poured, these are extruded. So these are probably going to be drier, a little chalkier, a little more difficult to activate. It's just with, with cheaper paints, it tends to be a bad sign. And different artists, have, like the person who um, was commenting pointed out that they have a problem with their liquid or their hand poured watercolors molding, which that sucks. Like, I don't know what's going on there. I live in a very humid area. I haven't had a problem with that but they said that they kept everything in really good conditions and I believe them. Maybe they got a bad batch. Maybe there was a manufacturer. Why can't I get this out? I don't want to tear up the box. Maybe there was like a manufacturing error with quality control. You know, there's a variety of reasons why products can fail in the past. So, okay, it has, this one doesn't have any cap, does it? Oh, it got stuck in there. What is this about? Why are you, why are you like this? How did they get that in there to begin with? It is so tight. It's like they built the box around the case and now I can't get the case out. Okay. Waha! We did it. So looking at this, it kind of seems like there might be some duplicate or very close duplicate colors, not a hundred percent. So in this 12 set, I'm seeing a lot of the same colors that are in this six set, although not one for one, and a lot of the same colors that are in this six set, although not one for one, with some additional colors. So basically, I, I didn't bring that up to like, you know, call that person out or anything. That's why, in fact, I encourage you guys to share your experiences when they're different from my own. That, you know, that way we can, you know, learn more and gain new experiences and have more that we can draw on as artists. So, you know, liquid poured watercolors can mold. I would think honey based ones should be less likely to mold because honey tends to have antifungal and antibacterial properties. So maybe Sennelier wouldn't or M. Grams wouldn't. That might be more of like a, a core problem maybe or a Daniel Smith problem. I've, I've never had that problem myself, but or, or maybe the person in question, um, it just wasn't 100% dried out when they put it away. I, I don't know, but um, I believe them and I believe that really happened. But yeah, it's gonna be a, your mileage may vary sort of situation. And that's why I also encourage you guys to share your experiences. And also, you know, if I don't answer all your questions, check out some of the other reviews here on YouTube. about biases and different artists having different experiences if you are new here if you found me via Google or YouTube search which that's what YouTube says everybody finds me by hi I'm Becca I'm a watercolor comic artist and I'm the creator of the comic seven inch Kara which you guys can learn about more here 
Seven Inch Carrot is an ongoing watercolor comic that follows the adventures of tiny seven inch tall Kara as she discovers a huge family secret and sets out on a big adventure to discover the truth for herself. You can read it as a webcomic at sevenincharrot.com or volume one and volume two are available to purchase in the Netto shop. If you enjoy Cottagecore or Studio Ghibli, I think you'll really enjoy Seven Inch Kara. Pretty cool, right? Hopefully you guys will check it out. So now you guys have kind of an idea of what my art looks like. That should give you guys a kind of an idea of what I'm looking for in watercolors. So my goals with watercolors and when I'm reviewing watercolors is light fastness is not necessarily the end all be all for me. While it is important since I am painting to scan and then reproduce as books, it isn't a deal killer if there's a watercolor or a color that I really like and want to introduce into my work or can utilize it in my comic pages since they're probably not going to be left out on display for long periods of time. And since I'm also an art educator, I'm always on the lookout for decent, affordable watercolors that I can either use in my classes or that I can recommend to my students if they're looking for something that's a little more budget friendly so they can get started on their watercolor journey. So what I'm looking for is a little bit different from what some of the other watercolor and art supply reviewers are looking for here on YouTube, but I think that's what makes me unique and makes me interesting. And hopefully that's why you guys will hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so YouTube will let you know when I have another review or tutorial up. So taking a look at these, we're gonna take a look at the packaging. On the back, it says beautiful glittery watercolor for all your painting needs. They have these, look at this. This doesn't even line up with the colors we've got in this set. Like this is the starry color. So I think it's supposed to be like the scar starry skies, Gensai palette that Kurataki makes. Man, that thing like really set everybody on fire with copying that. And these color swatches on the back don't represent that at all. These kind of remind me of those Simi Art mini palettes I reviewed for you guys, the skin tones and the candy set. It also says not suitable for children under three years of age, which frankly, you probably shouldn't be giving any of these kind of watercolors to children that young. I, I don't know that I would give a child under three Crayola watercolors either. They are supposedly non-toxic. They're made in China in the King Dao DDD Praise Stationery Co. Limited. And let's see if all of these have equally. This seems a little bit closer in terms of color as does this some some of them they didn't even try. They're like, yeah, sure, there's a purple in there. Let's let's include a purple, you know? Uh, not not a whole lot of an effort made. Why even include fake swatches if you're or a fake color representation if you're not gonna even try to approximate the colors? And then also, I thought this might be a super granulating kind of set just based on the art on here. No, no, just just mica based colors. So now looking at the comments on the listings for the most part people are pretty happy with these for the price these are fairly cheap at around five dollars some a little more some a little less but approximately five dollars each that is pretty good but mica based watercolors are really not expensive and you have a whole lot of options so i'm gonna hold these to the same standard that i'm holding all of the other student grade watercolors that i've been reviewing in the student grade showdown to and uh, you know, hopefully they'll impress me, but if not, I'll let you guys know. So since we have two sets of six and two sets of 12, we have 36 colors to swatch today. I am going to be swatching it on the same paper I use for all my swatches, Pinky, the Blick Studio Cotton Rag Watercolor Block. So I figure with these cheap watercolors, using cotton rag rather than cellulose is giving them the fairest shot at performing well. Although realistically, if you're painting on a budget, there's a good chance you're gonna be painting with a budget paper as well. So, you know, cellulose would probably be more accurate, but I do wanna be as fair as possible. So with the six sets, they slide out and inside is a plastic sleeve that holds our loose half pans. And there is no writing or anything on these half pants. On our 12 set, they are loose. These don't come with a swatch card. And I have a feeling they 
glued or used a glue dot on these to get them to stick down and they they do seem very dry so that'll be that'll be fun that'll be interesting what i think is the most interesting though is that they have diff different manufacturing processes so the mica based ones seem like they are liquid poured watercolors whereas the probably solid color ones seem like they're extruded watercolors that might mean they're using different binders and different fillers it would not at all surprise me if these were a dye based watercolor that's been attached to some kind of substrate but you know i've tried reaching out to some of these companies they don't really like to get back to me so i could ask but i don't have much faith that i will hear back what i want to do is i am going to use a black copic marker to put some lines down so for our swatch test I think the only one I'm going to do like I normally do are the ocean colors because these are more opaque colors. Generally I treat metallics like special effects colors and I kind of look at different things. So we're going to start with the ocean set and if you're new here, what I'm looking for when I'm swatching these kind of watercolors is I am going to test for opacity, which by the way, there was no opacity, light fast, or granulation information included with any of these. There also weren't any pigment information or color names. So, probably a dye base. But, you know, don't know for sure. This is just me guessing. Anyway, I'm going to be looking at opacity. I'm going to be looking at how these wash out. I'm going to be looking for granulation because, theoretically, different pigments have different degrees of staining and granulation. That's something to look at. And I'm also going to be looking at liftability once dry. Whereas with our mica based watercolors, I'm basically just going to be looking at opacity, shimmer, and if they have any kind of duochrome effects. Now for both, I'm gonna be looking at how quickly they activate. And while I don't always show it, I almost always, at least for the initial swatches, pre-activate it with a spritz of clean water and let it sit on my watercolors for about a minute just to kind of give it its best so as I was swatching the ocean colors, they really kind of started to surprise me. There's good color payoff, they're quick to activate, maybe some possibility of granulation, we'll have to see as it dries, and there's a bit of shimmer, but it's very subtle. So like, the more intense colors don't have much. The two silvery colors have a lot more. These are kind of like a good version of the Derwent Graphitant and that there's good color with a hint of sheen. So these might be fun. I mean, they're still full of extenders. They cake up on your brush, they get used up fast, they muddy the water. But now that you're aware of them and those problems, you can use them accordingly. These surprised me and I like being surprised because I thought these were going to be the worst and so far they are the most interesting. After allowing them to dry, I could see that these were definitely dye based because when you add water, they basically turn to nothing. I'm going to do a granulation test to see how these fare with lots of water. So originally, these really surprised and impressed me, but now that they've kind of dried, I'm a little on the fence because these are definitely dye-based. You see how as we get to the water, they just kind of fall apart? That's pretty typical for dye-based watercolors and something I noticed with the Simi Art watercolors. So I want to do a little bit of granulation testing to see how they fare with a lot of water. I'm going to do it over here to the side. And uh, I don't have high hopes for it, but I figure I will give it the best shot. At full saturation, these are pretty neat, but the shimmer is super subtle and more like graphite. And these mostly fall apart with lots of water. You can get some neat-ish effects on damp paper, but if you're not using, or rather, but not if you're using standing water like I did here with the super granulation test. So basically, these have potential and I wanna play around with them a bit more.
these are taking forever to dry tonight, so I'm just going to go ahead and move on to our pearlescent watercolors. I'm going to start with the 12 color set of pearlescents, and then we will do, I think, the starry ones, and then we'll do the gem colors. Although, like I said, there are some repeats. This will also give us a better idea of which colors are repeats in this set. Because I think, like, this really bright yellow gold isn't in this set. Although this, 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 and this kind of might be. And then this really bright gold is actually different, I think, from this one. This one is more yellow, which is kind of nice to see. It's nice, it's nice to see pearlescent colors that at least look like they should have some good color payoff. We'll see. I've reviewed a fair number of metallic and pearlescent watercolors here on the channel. They're really not my favorite to review because once we start getting into the cheaper watercolors, they tend to be very samey. So there really isn't a whole lot that I can say that would make one set preferable over another. So I'm gonna pre I'm gonna go ahead actually and pre-activate all three sets. And that way we can just do them bam bam bam, you know, instead of like waiting. So that's the starry color and then this is the gem colors and I'll link some of the other metallic watercolor reviews but I don't know yet if I'm gonna pull them all out and do the comparison kind of thinking about that just because we're talking about three different no four different sets today so that's a lot of watercolors that we're talking about but the ocean colors, I'm not really sure why they said, called them ocean colors. They don't really feel like ocean colors to me, but the ocean colors kind of remind me of like a weird cross between the Derwent Graphitant and Simi Art watercolors, which, not the most flattering comparison. So for the pearlescence, we are looking at a little bit different elements. We're really going to be looking at activation. We're also going to be looking at opacity, you know, how much color payoff we get. And we're going to be looking for any kind of special effects. We're also going to make sure that the color stays true because often in these kind of mass tones, you, it looks like really, vi really bright and vibrant and pretty. And then when you swatch them, they tend to fall apart. So we're going to be looking out for that as well. So these have an interesting color selection. There are some almost dual chrome colors, but these are definitely dye based and don't have that liquid metal look I'd like. When you pre-activate them, the dye seems to seep out and pool on top. And it's not the case for all the colors, but it's definitely the case for the dual chrome black and green. These are a little more difficult to activate than the pearlescent colors. Maybe it's an older palette and it's been sitting around. These are a bit better, but the color palette when it dries is kind of weak. The gem colors were surprisingly difficult to activate and I had to really scrub to get color. The colors are fine. I like the large flake gold, that's fun, but most of the brighter colors are very dye based and it's not like the mica really picked up in the color that well. Both of these sets are, uh, for the price they're fine for metallic watercolors. They're not the worst, but they're not the best. Simi Art has a product super similar to this, though I'm not sure if they're white labeling it from DDD Praise or vice versa, or they just bought the same palettes, like the same plastic slide holders. Browsing around AliExpress, there are a lot of sets that are very similar to this set. Like I said, these mica-based sets are cheaper to produce than pigment-based sets, so they're really common and popular because they are so much cheaper. The pros and cons of the DDD Praise watercolors. And I'm going to kind of talk about all of them generally. 
So the Ocean Color set, while it has some serious drawbacks, it also has some interesting possibilities that I think warrant further testing and playing around with it a little bit more. It's definitely the most interesting of the four sets I looked at today. And it's a bit more unusual, especially for these kinds of cheap dye-based watercolors. It has something extra added to it. I'm not sure if it's shimmer or a bit of graphite or what. If you guys know though, let me know. And the metallic sets are fine. They're not liquid metal. They're not particularly saturated, but they can add a pearlescent shimmer to your work. But I would not pay more than $5 per set. So what about the cons? The pearlescents are weak in terms of shimmer. The most interesting thing is the gold flake. And everything else is just much weaker and just kind of unimpressive. And the ocean set basically can't take any water at all or the colors start to really fall apart. Truly a mark of dye base watercolors. I didn't pull out all the sets that are similar to the DDD Praise sets, but I did pull out a few. So the most comparable right now, in my opinion, is the Simi Art watercolors. Probably these two sets, although the packaging is different, I feel like the quality is about the same. Got stuck in there in that these are dye-based watercolors that just don't have a lot of oomph or impact and they tend to fall apart really quickly when you add water. The packaging is cute. The art that they're using to promote it is cute. I do wonder if they actually painted the art that they're using to promote it with these watercolors, like if some artists did that or if they just grabbed some watercolor art or what. I, or if they use like one pan from the palette, you know, there, there's all kinds of little tricks that people do. This one, maybe, but I kind of have my doubts because it looks like they did a lot of wet into wet. They do say these are glittery watercolors. I wouldn't call them glittery at all. They are maybe a little bit of shimmer. So another set that I think is pretty comparable, uh, a little worse, is the Xyli W watercolors. These are some of the worst that I've reviewed in this student grade showdown. They're pretty terrible, but these are also probably dye-based watercolor that where the dye has been kind of precipitated out onto some sort of substrate, and then they use that to make the watercolors. And also, the Mozart Como Rebbe metallic set, which I was really excited about, and I reviewed this recently. I was really excited about the set because the pictures make it look really good. And it, ooh, it smells funky. It falls, ooh, really gross actually. It's got that medicine smell. These fall apart pretty quickly when you add water as to, when you add water to them as well. Sorry, brain jumbling the words there. Word salad is fun salad. So they're pretty comparable to these as well. Also fairly similar, but I think a little bit better just because they're easier to activate are the grabby or graby watercolors. These are, now that we look at them, they're really pretty similar. And these have actually hardened up quite a bit since they've had a chance to really dry out over time. So these are also probably mica plus a dye. Again, that's really a popular thing to do. Watercolor, this though, I think we get some more brilliant colors. We get some brighter colors. Um, act, They're looking really similar actually. The purple in this set might be a little more purpley, although that one's really pretty. That blue is really similar. Some of the greens are really similar. Hmm. 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 Maybe. Maybe. If you guys know, if you're able to track down the source to this mystery, let me know down in the comments below. Because... Now I'm kind of starting to wonder if those are very similar, if not the same sets. And then finally, these are very similar to the Graphitint watercolors. These are by Derwent, so they're much more expensive. I'm trying to open them so you guys can see. So the colors on the box look pretty saturated, look pretty interesting. They're supposed to be intense watercolors with some graphite added to them. They're not erasable, unfortunately. That was like the big thing I was hoping for. And they are not. But they really aren't as saturated or as shimmery slash 
graphite -y. In fact, they didn't really have any of the properties that I wanted from graphite because I thought it'd be really cool to erase and pick out highlights. They didn't have any of those properties, unfortunately. These are like a more saturated version of the, the Derwent Graphitint. So those are some comparable watercolors. Would I say they're better? No, not necessarily. Would I say they're worse? No, not necessarily. They are really pretty comparable. And it's one of the reasons I don't really, just as a reviewer, I don't really care for like white labeling and drop shipping and ODM and OEM services is because it really obfuscates who's making what and what the pigment information is and what the light fast information is. All of that gets kind of lost as it passes hands. Like Arteza is an excellent example of that because they're half pans, they don't have any pigment information for them. Whereas for the tubes, they do. So this kind of like one person manufactures it, another person creates the labels, another person sells it. Things really start to get muddied and lost. And as a reviewer and as an artist, it gets kind of frustrating trying to suss everything out because one, I'm not 100% comfortable saying, oh yes, this is made by that company because they're super similar. Because to some degree, these are common practices like using mica and dyeing it in order to get your mica colors. Pretty common practice. Using dyes to color a substrate and then turning them into, you know, watercolors, not uncommon either. So I can't really say, oh yeah, when they do this, this, and this, that's definitely such and such company. All I can really confidently say is they are really similar and I kind of suspect there's some white labeling going on. And especially like with this set, this could have been repackaged just so easily because it's in a pretty basic tin with some screening on it. It's got a cheap plastic liner and then there's just half pans stuck inside. So there isn't really anything that makes any of these individual things, you know, more special or more unusual. And the same goes for the Mozart tin. I mean, this is the Simi Art tin, you know what I mean? But that's a pretty common tin to use as well. The only thing that makes these, this unusual is these pop out. And we see that with the Fine Tech set, but I haven't seen that from Simi Art yet. But just because I haven't seen that doesn't mean they don't manufacture that and then sell that to another company to distribute. So if you guys have the skinny, if you guys have some information I don't have, if you guys have the lowdown, please do let me know down in the comments below. I'm always interested in hearing the scuttlebutt and you guys have shared some really interesting information with me over the years and I really appreciate it. Today's review was pretty interesting. It wasn't really as fruitful as I'd hoped, but I'm really not surprised either. These are around $5 each for 12 to six or six to 12 pans, which I mean, you know, there has to hit a point where it's too good to be true. But I'll tell you something that isn't too good to be true. You guys can read 7-Inch Kara for free as a webcomic at 7inchkara.com. And then, if you like the comic, you can buy it from the Natto shop. In fact, you even save some money if you buy both. And I always send some fun free goodies. Kind of pick whatever I think the person will like as a bonus. Uh, whenever I ship out copies of 7-Inch Kara, you can give it as a gift. I would be more than delighted to dedicate it to somebody or do a sketch in it. Or you can keep it for yourself. And not, <laughs> not only is it a good way to acquire some of my art for yourself, to get a delightful watercolor comic if you enjoy comics, or to score a great Christmas present for someone who enjoys comics, or tiny people stories, or fairy tales, or watercolor art, or Studio Ghibli, or the Moriki aesthetic, any of those things, they will probably enjoy 7-inch Kara. But you are also helping me continue to make more work because you're encouraging me by supporting what I do. So it's win-win for everybody. And I hope you guys will check it out because like I said, you can read it for free. So it's literally like no risk at all at 7inchcara.com. So my verdict on the DDD Praise watercolors. Sometimes things are too good to be true and it really kind of depends on what your expectations are and what you're looking for. I was intrigued, not necessarily impressed, but definitely intrigued by their ocean colors. These are 
unusual. They seem like they might have a graphite base, although I don't yet know for sure. And the colors are more vibrant and they were quick to activate. I didn't have to fight with this set. In fact, if all of these sets had been kind of based around the graphite and had handled like this, I would have at least been interested. I like seeing unusual things. These kind of remind me of the graphite tints with a little more saturation, but not as much graphite. So these are interesting. I'm gonna figure out something to do with these and I'll share it with you guys. So if you're new and you're not a subscriber, you might wanna click that subscribe button and click the bell notification to see what I do with these DDD Praise Ocean Color watercolors. Now, where things start to fall apart is with their glitter. These are not really glittery. They're shimmery. They're kind of metallic. They're pearlescent. Glitter implies bigger chunks to me. These are very ho-hum, run-of-the-mill, your standard cheap watercolors. They have some okay colors to them, but some of them are missing that shimmer effect that you would want to see. Some of them are just kind of lackluster and boring. I think the best of these three sets is the starry colors, but if you don't mind spending a little bit more money, there are glitter watercolors that are going to make you so much happier than these. I would recommend you check out Hydrocolor watercolors. They are handmade, so you're supporting a small business. They smell delicious because they smell like clove. They're using that to keep them from molding and they're beautiful and they offer all kinds of different colors. I think I have like their basic 12 color set and the colors are gorgeous, but they offer additional colors as well. So that could be a, a way to go or you could go with the fine tech watercolors, which are, I think I did a video where I compared the two and I think what I basically said was it depends on what you're looking for because they're both great. So the fine tech watercolors are not handmade, but they've got some great metallics that are really rich. They offer a lot of different gold. So if you're looking for a nice rich metallic, whether it's for brush lettering, calligraphy, dip pen, hand lettering, adding gold accents, or, you know, making a commission a little bit more special, you are going to be so much happier with those. These, all of these are probably dye based and that means they're going to be more fugitive to light. So if you're making art to sell or for someone to display, it's going to fall apart pretty quickly in terms of like the colors just washing out. I mean, it can't even take water, you know, light is going to be anathema to this. So what I would recommend is I would recommend spending, saving up and spending that extra money. If you can't afford to do that, I think they will last you longer because these get used up really quickly. I think you'll be happier in the long term. I have the same fine tech pearlescent set and I have used it a lot and it has you know a little worse for wear but there's still a lot of color in it and still a lot of use in it so in terms of economy if you're looking to do something for a really long time I would say skip these save up and get a fine tech set I think you'll be a lot happier you can also buy fine tech colors open stock so you don't have to buy the whole set if it's like whoa way too much at the time I I get that I go open stock quite often with lots of things. Or if you buy like a base set and then you want to add some additional colors, you can do that too. I don't have any affiliation with any of these. I don't have any relationship with AliExpress other than as a customer. I don't see any kind of kickback when I'm talking about AliExpress products. I just want to help you guys make art a habit. And to do that, I think it's important to find art supplies that are accessible, but will also do what you want them to do. The biggest one of the two biggest things I see drive people out of making art is when art supplies don't perform the way they're supposed to and the artist blames themselves because they don't have the experience with other supplies to know that they're not the one messing up. It's the art supplies that are messing up. I can't tell you guys how frustrated I was in the beginning when I was painting chapter one of Seven Inch Kara because I was painting on a really cheap, it was like Canson student watercolor paper. So it is a cellulose paper. It was super thin for a watercolor paper. It it could not take any layers. Colors would just slough off of it. And I was painting with Windsor and Newton watercolors at the time. So I was using professional grade watercolors on this really cheap paper. It would buckle all over the place. I was so frustrated. And then a friend tipped me off that I could use Canson Montval. It's still a cellulose paper, but it's a little more expensive and it handles almost like a cotton rag. 
and it was like a match made in heaven. It really made a big difference for me and how I can paint watercolor comics and what I can expect of my comics. So that kind of converted me. I am a believer that helping people, it doesn't always have to be the most expensive. It doesn't always have to be professional. It's really about finding the best fit for you where you're at right now. And hopefully today's review helped you guys do that. Whether you saw this and you fell in love and the price is right, or whether you saw this and you were like, you know what, I'm gonna save up a little bit longer and buy something that's gonna make me a lot happier. Either way, I hope I helped you guys out. So what did you guys think of these DDD Praise palettes? I was, <laughs> we're starting to see a trend here. I was kind of disappointed. Most of them were just very basic mica palettes. Nothing we haven't seen like a million other times, done a million different other ways, often done better. But the ocean colors actually kind of surprised me. They're the only ones I'm interested in seeing more of. So. They are at the top row here. I apologize if it is super bright. And even though these are dye-based watercolors and have many of the flaws that dye-based watercolors seem to have, they also have some color impact and they seem to have some graphite or some other darker granulation slash shimmer going on, which makes them pretty dang interesting in my book. So. I will probably play with these a little bit more. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that. Whereas with these, these are probably going to go in my class stuff. They're not great, but they're, they're passable enough for very young students to use and enjoy. So they're not going to go to waste, but they're not something that I would recommend. And I think there are better places. For you to spend your money. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoy my work or you'd like to check out more of my work, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would check out my comic, Seven Inch Kara. You guys can read it as a web comic or buy it in dead tree form. So as a reminder, if you like my work, if you like my art, it would really mean a lot to me if you checked out my comic, Seven Inch Kara. This is an all ages comic that would be perfect to give to a younger comic fan or keep for yourself. And you can check out the first eight chapters at seveninchkara.com. So hopefully that'll convince you guys to give it a try. Let me know if you enjoy it. I'd love to hear back from you guys. So hopefully today's review was helpful, useful, and informative. Hopefully it'll help you guys save some money. And that is part of making art a habit, buying art supplies you enjoy instead of spending money on art supplies that fight you and make art just not fun, make art a struggle because we want to make art something that is accessible to everyone and that anyone can enjoy, whether you're very good at it or you're just doing it because it makes your heart sing. All of that is legit and I want to help you guys get there. Speaking of making art a habit, I've got some great watercolor tutorials, some stash buster tutorials that I hope you guys will check out. So, so far I have at the very least, this is Future Vision, so I'm not super sure which ones have been released, but I do know that the Golden Stars bookmark has gone out to you guys. Hopefully you guys will check that out if you like glitter and granulation. You guys should also have gotten the tie-dye Easter egg, which I know it's not Easter anymore, but there's some great techniques in that tutorial that I think are applicable to other shapes besides Easter eggs. And then you guys should have also gotten an easy rabbit or Easter bunny and easy spring chicken tutorial as well. So if you guys are looking for a way to kind of get into watercolor without having to be great at drawing or without having to know a lot about watercolor, those stash buster tutorials are a great way to kind of ease yourself into it without spending a lot of money either because they're designed to use watercolor paper scraps. So you could take one sheet of watercolor paper, chop it up into a bunch of bookmarks and then do a bunch of tutorials. So they're meant to be easy and economical, a great way to either, you know, kill some time, enjoy, relax, wind down, very low pressure, low stakes art making, 
or as a way to familiarize yourself with a whole new media. So hopefully you guys will check those out. I'll have the playlist link down in the description below for you guys. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, I really hope you guys will consider sticking around, clicking that subscribe button and the bell notification to let YouTube know that you want to see more from me. Sometimes we think we're subscribed to somebody and we've just been watching a bunch of their videos. So YouTube recommends a bunch and then we're gone for a while and YouTube quits recommending them. And I know that's a, that's something I tend to do. So I have to, if I've watched like five of somebody's videos and then it's time for me to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Cause I'm probably going to like most of what they have to say, or at least be interested. But I ask you guys to do that because I get complaints from time to time. Like, Oh, YouTube isn't recommending my videos anymore, or people aren't seeing me on the recommended page anymore. And by clicking that bell notification and turning on your notifications, that's a great way to make sure you don't miss anything. And I've got some great stuff planned this year for you guys that I can't wait to share with y'all. And speaking of great stuff, there's even more great stuff going up behind the scenes on Patreon. So if you like what I do and you want to support it, you can join me over at patreon.com slash natosoup. And a huge thanks to my amazing patrons for making reviews just like this one possible because I use the funds from my Patreon to buy the supplies that I review here on the channel. And you guys will see their names in just a moment. So thank you guys. I know that was weird. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was fun hanging out with you guys and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye guys.